I'll be back. God, I love it when he says that. With the release of the newest addition to the Terminator franchise, Terminator Dark Fate, What is that? We thought it might be time to do a little refresher on where the story left off, where it picks up, and maybe we'll sort out all this time travel stuff along the way. So it's time to get nude and get zapped back in time into a little lightning crater, then awkwardly find some clothes so you don't seem like a crazy person. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> Here's your IMDb cheat sheet for Terminator Dark Fate. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean. Right? So if you want to avoid any spoilers, this is your chance to sprint away like the T-1000. The year is 2029, and it's dark and all dusty and blue, and there are just skulls everywhere. Machines have become self-aware and are locked in a war with these pesky humans who just won't die, thanks to the leadership of John Connor. So they take the only logical step to eradicate their problem, time travel. The machines send a buff, naked T-800 Terminator back to 1984 to kill John's mother, Sarah Connor. Although, you know, it takes a little bit because the T-800's got to find a phone booth and then he thumbs his way through a phone book and he just decides to kill every Sarah Connor in the greater Los Angeles area. You're dead, honey. But here's the real Sarah Connor, a mild-mannered waitress who works at the worst diner with the worst customers ever. Look at this way, in a hundred years, who's gonna care? Hot on the T-800's tail is Kyle Reese, also from the future, sent back in time to protect Sarah. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> now all of this commotion and property damage attracts the attention of the LAPD. They bring Kyle and Sarah into the station, and the interrogation doesn't go so well. Why this elaborate scheme with the Terminator? Things get a little more dicey when the Terminator parks his car in the police station and just causes a whole lot of trouble. He chases our heroes all over Los Angeles, gets his Arnold Schwarzenegger costume burnt off, and follows them into this factory. Kyle Reese sacrifices himself and almost kills the Terminator, and then Sarah finishes him off. You're terminated. Quick side note, by the way, John Connor ends up being Kyle Reese's son because Kyle made sweet, sultry love to Sarah earlier in the film. And don't try to overthink this particular time paradox, you'll drive yourself crazy. God, a person could go crazy thinking about this. Fast forward to 1995, John Connor's a little of a kid who's been raised by even your foster parents, and he spends his days hanging out with Budnick from Salute Your Shorts, hacking people's ATM cards to play arcade games. His mom, Sarah, spends her days beefing up doing chin-ups in a mental institution after insisting for years that a robot tried to kill her and that the world is going to end. You're already dead, everybody! If you, you're dead already! Time travel is still a little bit tricky, you know, humans and machines are just, they're just kind of button mashing the time travel device at this point. A reprogrammed T-800 is sent back in time to protect our sweet 10-year-old delinquent boy John Connor from a more advanced Terminator, the T-1000, who can't bend press nearly as much as Arnold can, but he's made of liquid metal, can morph into people that he's killed, and since he's wearing a police uniform, comes off as incredibly trustworthy. Are you the legal guardian of John Connor? Your foster parents are dead. John and the T-800 break his mom out. Come with me if you want to live. The T-800 becomes kind of a surrogate father and learns some Spanish. Hasta la vista, baby. Then the three try to prevent Judgment Day completely by going straight to Miles Dyson, the scientist who is unknowingly causing Judgment Day by reverse engineering the arm and computer chip from the first film. So then the four of them team up to retrieve the arm and the chip from Cyberdyne. There's a lot of explosions and bullets and death. And then John, Sarah, and the T-800 end up in a steel mill. The T-1000 gets blown apart by a grenade launcher and falls into a vat of molten steel. They chuck the arm and the chip in there too, but in order to completely prevent Judgment Day, they need to destroy the last chip in existence, which is in the T-800's head. Goodbye, Arnold. Or maybe not. Talk to the hand. Since James Cameron and the creators of Terminator Dark Fate are completely ignoring the events of Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, Terminator Salvation, Terminator Genesis, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, and the Universal Studios attraction T2 3D Battle Across Time, Terminator Dark Fate picks up the story 27 years later. I'll be back. So what has Sarah been up to for 27 years? Did Judgment Day ever come? And when will they finally be able to time travel with clothes on? Hopefully we'll get most of these answers in Terminator Dark Fate.